not because of you. It's because of Jesus. It's not because of your goodness. It's because of His. The Bible says that a tree of life is a dream fulfilled. If you believe Jesus is God and you believe He rose from the dead, you're going to heaven. There's nothing you can do to make God love you any less. He loves you. Hi there, my name is Ben Conway. I'm the lead pastor of Tree of Life Church in Dagenham in Essex, and I'm the founder of the Tree of Life family, which is a growing network of growing churches. There might be a Tree of Life Church near you. And we have services every weekend in Watford, in Dagenham, in Guildford, in Brentwood, in Croydon, in Dorset. And we're currently planting churches in Cambridge, in Nuneaton, in the West Midlands there. We're also planting churches in uh, Exeter, in Bristol and in Suffolk. And so we're having a great time opening up new churches, starting new meetings and getting the good news of Jesus Christ out to people. And so if you're looking for a great church, just go to our website. I couldn't make the name of our website any easier, tree.church. Just go to tree.church. That's all you have to do, tree.church. And uh, there will see a button there called locations, and that will tell you where we're planting and what we're doing. Well, it's an awesome joy to have you with us today. It's an awesome joy to be with you. Those of you who have been watching every week will know for the last few weeks I've had different family members with me in the, the program. I had my wife, Amanda, my wonderful wife, couldn't do anything that I'd do without her. And then my daughter, Lydia, who is an integral part of our ministry and during lockdowns, we're doing some great stuff for younger children. Um, but today I've got my eldest son with me. His name's Adam. And uh, Adam is a Bible college graduate, a Bible college graduate from Caris Bible College in Walsall in the West Midlands. And uh, he has done all sorts of exciting stuff. He's also been a, a youth pastor in a mini, in the, Indiana. Indiana. Indiana, okay. There's a lot of places in America. I knew it was one of them. Indiana for a few months. And uh, he's looking to go out back to the States and do some more ministry soon. And uh, he also works for the church. And so if you're watching this on most of the TV stations that you're watching this on, my son has got those programs ready, got them in a format that you can watch, made sure they're labeled correctly. And he also does that for our radio ministry as well and a bunch of other stuff. And so well, he's paid to do that as well. It's not just, you know, working for the family. He actually does a phenomenal job, and he's also involved in helping with some of our younger men's ministries and other things going on in the church. So, Adam, just introduce yourself, and why don't you tell us how, you know, it happened a long time ago, you were very young, but how you became a Christian, your walk with God. Tell us something. All right, then. Um, man, my becoming a Christian story um, is quite simple. I, I tell it to people a lot. Basically, I saw... My parents pray in tongues, as you know, yes. um, being one of them. <laughs> All right. I do pray in tongues a lot. I yeah. like praying in tongues. And I just wanted to do that. Mm. And so I was about three years old, and I asked my mom if I could do that, if she could teach me how to do that. As far as I was concerned, being three years old, hearing you guys speak that language, I just thought you guys came from a different country. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I didn't realize you were all British. Um, but. <laughs> In my mind, that's what it was. It was something you could learn. It was something that you could, mm. you know, fathom with your human understanding. And uh, thankfully, I have my mom uh, to help me get that sort of... Most effective yeah, evangelist yeah. in the world, Amanda Conway, definitely. Yeah. And so that's what, she just prayed with me that, first of all, she said, you know, I needed to get saved. Yep. And so she walked me through the prayer of salvation. And the next thing I know, I just said, okay, cool, now I want to speak the language and... I started speaking the language, you know? Yeah, I remember, I remember that. Up. I was yeah. there when you started praying in tongues. Do you remember where it was? Because I remember where it was. Um, if I am correct, it was in Wales. Am I it right? wasn't in Wales. No, nope, you are Wales? incorrect. Right, it was okay. before our Welsh time. It was, it was in a town Wales. called Nantwich no. in Cheshire. And we'd just got fish and chips. Oh, wow. And you were in a pushchair which was actually um, your brother's pushchair, but he was in my arms. He was a baby then. And you'd sat down in the pushchair to eat your fish and chips. I'm and that's lazy. when you started talking to mom and she led you to the Lord. And then you started praying in tongues, sitting in your brother's pushchair at the age of three. It was wonderful. I was a joy to be there. And so, you know, 
Yeah. Uh, you know, it was it was good you got saved at the age of three because you were living this huge lifestyle of sin at the age of three, you know, Absolutely. all those terrible things you were doing. But, you know, it's never too early to receive Jesus. And it's, it's wonderful, you know, one of the, the greatest joy of my life, the greatest joy of my life, you know, I pastor these churches, I'm on TV, all sorts of things are happening. You know, I've seen all sorts of miracles all over the world. But the greatest joy of my life is all four of my children are walking with God and love the mm. Lord. I've got three sons and a daughter and they all love the Lord. So you went to Bible college straight from high school. Yes. I didn't do that. I, I, I did not do that. Okay. Yeah. It took me a few years to catch up with God there. So how did you know that God wanted you to go to Bible school? How did you know that was the will of God for your life? I mean, me and mum didn't make you. Well, um, shortly before I went to Bible college, 17 years old, um, God told me one day to fast. And as you know, you know, you, I, you know, it wasn't something I did much growing up. We didn't, you didn't make us fast as children. I think the, the longest we'd fasted was one day. We generally had this thing in Tree of Life Church, we sometimes do it, where we fast just before the new year, just for one day. And so that, that's, that's, that's the most I've fasted ever in my life. And I do do longer fast with the adults. Yeah, you, 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 we do yeah. do seven day, 14 day, 21 day fast as a church. But yeah. I've, I've never believed that teenagers should fast for more than a day. They're still growing. They still need... So that, that, that's my philosophy, you know? Um, so, yeah, I know well, you'd fasted for a day, so... Well, God, God, God kind of took it a little bit further than a day. Okay. Um, so I was, I was wondering what university I should go to, because that's mm -hmm. what I wanted to do. For me, and I think you can realise this from just what me saying about my testimony, everything was about learning. Mm -hmm. Everything had to be about something you could definitively learn and I don't know where I picked that up over the years, uh, but I think that it doesn't, even, even raised in a Christian household, you pick up ideologies just from the environments you go to. You go to school, um, even when I was homeschooled for a bit, I met other people who were homeschooled. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we m listened to different preachers and they all teach you different ideologies. And for some reason, the ideology in my mind was Everything had to be learned, all right? Learning is the highest that you can have. So I was asking God what university to go to. And you, you, uh, no, none, none of my brothers have been to university yet. No, you were the eldest, you were the you first, know? yeah. Um, and so I'm sitting there thinking, what do I do? Yeah. Where do I go? Um, I went to one guy, and um, I don't know if you know Roy Burley. I don't know Roy oh, okay. at all, no. Well, he, he, was, he, he runs a, a youth ministry up in Warsaw. I, I didn't know that he did that. I just knew him as this guy who, sh who worked with Andrew Womack's mm -hmm. ministry. And uh, I prayed with him, and he didn't tell me anything about Bible college, which I think was pretty impressive. But what he did say is, God is telling you something, you just don't want to listen to it. Mm. And I, I listened to that, and I was like, you're wrong. <laughs> You're wrong, all right? God's, God's not been telling me anything, all right? God hasn't been showing me anything at all. Um, and it was funny because I, I just I kept fasting. Every day I'd wake up and go, which university do you want me to go to, God? Which university do you and, and I just got no answer. I'm like, I'm fasting now. And I think it got up to, and it was one of the longest fasts I've ever done. It was about 17 or 18 days. I'm, I'm, I'm 17 years old at this point. I know it doesn't entirely look like I fast. <laughs> I know how to fast. But, you know, back then I was even skinnier. Mm -hmm. you know? And um, eventually I just said, okay, God, I know you want me to go to Bible college. <laughs> you, know? you see, th th this is where one of the yeah. ways in which many people, and some of you listening to us right now may, may realize this, is that we limit God when we set him multiple choice questions. What do I mean by that? Well, like Adam was doing, you know, well, which university shall I go to? Is it A, Cambridge? Is it B, Oxford? Is it C, Edinburgh? Is it D, Leicester? And you've got all these. Mm. But actually, what if the answer is none of the above? Mm. You know, and, and me and Amanda, my, my, my wife Amanda, you know, when we pray about the network, we're like, where should we start a new church? Who should we have in leadership? We, we get into the same trap. Well, who should we put as the pastor of this church? Is it A, this person, B, this person, C, this person? Sometimes God's like, well, actually, maybe it's someone different. Yep. Maybe it's something, that maybe his plan is bigger than your limited ability to select options for God to answer. Yeah. And so that's a really important thing to do when you're, you know, asking God for guidance for big things in your life. You know, what if God doesn't want you to go to any of those universities? What if God doesn't want you to go to any of those churches? Because this is what me and Amanda did when it came to Bible college. We set out about five or six Bible colleges, and I'm very glad for the time I was at Bible college. Mm. I'm very glad for what they taught me. But I wonder sometimes 
if I hadn't set like four or five before the Lord said which one, you know, I have those ones. I definitely went to the right one. Mm. But maybe there was another option. Maybe there was something totally different. And maybe I missed it for a few years. But so God started speaking to you about going to Bible college. Yeah. Um, me being the very wise person that I am, went to God and said, sure, I'll do it, but on two conditions. Oh, I see. All right, because um, I was young, uh, younger. Uh, yeah, when, when Paul said put away childish things, <laughs> you know, making conditions before God definitely counts a childish thing. Uh, and uh, so what I said to him was, before I go, I want a place to stay and a job. And I was applying for jobs all over London at the time, and I just wasn't getting any. Yeah. Um, and then God just said, okay, cool. Uh, see this, I was on Sainsbury's website. Sainsbury's, yeah. Am I allowed to say Sainsbury's on the end? Other supermarkets <laughs> are available. Yeah, all right. <laughs> uh, and I, 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 I just felt from God, just it is I'd put in Warsaw. Mm. And so I applied for a job. I'd, I'd, I'd only had one job before that. Um, and I was saying, <laughs> all right, cool. Um, and I got the job yeah. on the day. And then the place as well was the other thing I needed. And somebody in the Guildford Church came up to me and said, do you know anyone who wants to go to Bible college? Because we've got a place and we... And I was like, okay, cool. I, I went through every single church that we ran to find somebody else <laughs> to fill that place in that house. And nobody else wanted to go. So I was like, all right then, I see how it is. I see how this works, God. Um, so... <laughs> At the time, it was only three churches, but there was however yeah. many, 150 or so Probably people. about 100, 150 you know? people on a weekend. Yeah, so I'm, 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 I went through all of those people trying to find somebody else to go through that. But, you know, I went and I lived there and so I... God provided you yeah. the house. God provided you the job. Yeah. And uh, then you went. Now, me and your mum had never said to you, you must go to Bible school. You know, we, we were happy supporting you whatever you felt led to do. But when you did go, I always made an insistence, and I, I've made this with all the children, is that when you go off to university, you go off and, you know, as, if I'm still funding you, like we were a little bit at Bible college, not much because you had your job and everything, my, my rule's always been you're going to be at church. Yeah. And so you had to find a church up there as well. Well, that was a very fun experience. I can imagine. I don't know if I've ever told you the, my first ever Sunday in Warsaw. This is a funny okay. story. Just, if it, uh, I, I'm, tell a funny story, but just be polite to everyone. This is going to go on TV, okay? People are going to watch this. So be nice to everybody, okay? So my, my, my supermarket that I worked at was about yeah. eight miles away from Warsaw. So it was eight miles away from my house. Wow. Yeah, this is... So I knew... Okay, I could roughly walk eight miles, but and I know I did you a, don't drive, yes. so that's right. a long. That's a long. Well, I, I I did a, a Saturday evening shift. I couldn't get out of. I was like, okay, cool. That, that, that's how it works, and that's the buses don't run outside of London. I didn't realize they didn't run until a certain time outside outside of London. That, that's a thing. Yes. <laughs> no, I've, I've got friends who've just moved out of London, and uh, they went to the bus stop to see when the bus was to take them into town. And instead of it being like every ten minutes or whatever, it was like Tuesday. Mm. I'm like, well, there's no buses for another day. <laughs> uh, and so I walked home, mm -hmm. realizing that that's the only way I was going to get home. Yeah. And on the way, I saw a church, and I thought, well, I've, I've got to check out some of the churches in the area. Uh, I knew which church God wanted me to go to, and I'll, I'll get to that story in a little bit. But I went into this church, and, well, they, they, they were amazed, because I said, oh, I come from this village here. That's, that's where I'm living. I live in Warsaw, and they're like, Warsaw, that's... That's five miles away. Like, that was the, the edge of the earth for them. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, they, they were talking. Uh, they did a sermon, which I did not agree with. Oops. Um, I didn't say anything. I yep. thought, you know what, I'm going to keep quiet. That's, I, I had enough sense on my shoulders to know, keep quiet sometimes. Yeah, that, that's a um, good rule. Yeah. You know, don't move into someone else's house as a guest mm. and start moving the furniture around. That's my rule. But, you know. Yeah. So, Midway yeah. through the service, somebody asked me what, where... Um, they asked me what teachers I listened to. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, one of my favorite teachers ever is Kenneth Hagen. <laughs> I'm a big Kenneth so, Hagen fan. Yeah. Awesome teacher. Yeah, so before the service was over, the, they, they didn't have a pastor of this church for some reason. They, they were apparently past pastors. Okay. Um, you know, I, I don't understand that, but sure. Um, so the deacons all gathered together in the middle of the service, and one of them drove me home before the service was over. <laughs> so, so that you could... So, so that, that I... Yeah, because I'd to. said... Get out of the church, I, don't I ever come back. Wow, yeah, that's um, amazing, you know, they just didn't want, they, So I was yeah. literally driven out of a church. Wow, that's amazing. You know? 
Um, That's awesome. Yeah. Well, you certainly inherited some sort of anointing from your father then, because I've been thrown out of a few places. Yeah. And so, but eventually, you know, uh, like I said, God told me to go to this specific mm. church. Um, run by Will and Bob Graham. Oh, we love Will and Bob and Graham at Tree of Life. Wonderful. Oh, my They're goodness. in Ireland now. Yeah. And they're I'm, still ministering, still going strong. And, and so, I, it, you, you know this bit of the story. It would take me another eight miles from work to... I'd walk all the way from the outskirts of Birmingham to Litchfield. Mm -hmm. And there were buses that ran from Litchfield to Rugeley. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. Bus. So, yeah, I'd, I'd walk an eight-mile walk make sure I was on, got yep. to the bus on time. And, you know, it wasn't every week. Uh, occasionally there was a couple, about once every every other week or every three weeks or so, they'd drive me from Rugeley um, back home to oh, Lovesley, or drive me from Birmingham to Rugeley, which was lovely. It meant my feet didn't hurt nearly as much. But I tell you what, when you've walked eight miles to get to church, you, you know you know that church is where you're supposed to be. Mm. And Will used to ask me, he'd be like, but why? Why would you do? And I said, because if I'm going to show you this much, this much faithfulness, this much integrity, and how much is that going to reap towards how people treat me exactly. and what people show to me? Exactly. And like, I, like we've discussed, I wasn't the smartest <laughs> at that age. But I mean, it was, it was great. It was fantastic. I was at a and, pastor's yeah. conference a couple of years back, and one of the pastors says, how do you do it? How are your elders so loyal and the other pastors in your team, man? They mm. take a bullet for you. They really love you. And I said, well, they're, they're great people. They're wonderful people. But you understand, for all those times I was youth pastor, assistant pastor for the years before I launched out and started Tree of Life, man, I'd have taken a bullet for all those. Mm. I mean, you, you remember growing up with Steve Huntley, yep. Richard Smith, all those guys, senior pastors I was you know, under. I, I would have gladly taken a bullet for them. Mm. You sow that, you do reap it. And it, it's concerning to me to see how many Christians don't sow that kind of pattern of faithfulness and dedication to local church. And I was saying, man, and then some of them go, well, there's going to be revival, there's going to be a great awakening. Do you know there's going to be a great awakening? Mm -hmm. They need a great awakening at 8 a.m. on a Sunday to wake themselves up and go to church Absolutely. and get themselves there. Yeah. The, the one thing I really remember about um, your time at Bible College was uh, your mission trip. And uh, you went to the Czech Republic. Yeah. And so tell us about that for a little bit. Tell us about being in the Czech Republic. Well, I mean, going to Will Graham's church taught me one major thing. He, he sat down with me and uh, used to teach me how to preach. Mm -hmm. and obviously, I, I learned a little bit from you, but, you know, I learned a lot from him as well. And, it's, you know, it all really added well together. And so me and my friend Brett Hager, mm -hmm. um, an awesome man of God, fantastic man, we went on a mission trip together um, in, a, in my second year. And we went to the Czech Republic. Mm -hmm. um, don't ask me to say the names of the places because I, I would butcher them. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, uh, Kustendil, I think. No, no, that's, that's, in Bulgaria. that's Bulgaria. I took um, you there. You yeah, didn't go there with Bible school. You went there with me. Uh, <laughs> I remember Kustendil. Yeah. I've been there. I go there more than once. Uh, I can't remember the names of the places. Okay, so you, you were uh, traveling the Czech Republic yeah. anyway. I was traveling. I've never been to the Czech Republic. Yeah. I've been to um, Slovakia. And I've been to Croatia, and I've been to um, Bulgaria and Albania. I've been all around that area. I've never actually been to Czech. I mean, it was it was a fantastic. The first night, I was preaching um, at this church, and uh, I preached my. I've got a fair few sermons now over the years, and one of my favorite sermons ever is the greatest miracle ever. The greatest and, miracle ever. Uh, I hope that's a reference to the resurrection. It is a <laughs> reference to Jesus dying on the cross. It's. it's yeah. I go through. 20 different things Jesus did when he died at the cross. Wow, that's, that's powerful. 20. And I got to number eight. Yeah. All right, number eight is you don't have to be condemned. Mm -hmm. You don't have to feel any condemnation for any sin you've done. And when I got to number eight, my translator just stopped translating. <laughs> and I said, what, what's wrong? Are you OK? And she's like, I've never read that in the Bible before. <laughs> You know, she, was just, she just read wow. through that. She's like, I've never read in the Bible that I don't need to be condemned for any sins. I don't need to feel bad for any sins I've ever done. I'm like, that's great. But yeah. I'd like everyone else to, to hear that too. Yes. <laughs> you know? I, I've, I've had some real fun with translators. I won't tell you any of the bad stories. But I remember when I was in it, uh, not Italy, India. I was in India a number of years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, the translator was um, translating to Indian and uh, to Hindi. And I was preaching. I was uh, in uh, Shandigarh in the north mm -hmm. of India. And uh, halfway through my message, just this 
idea of this unconditional love of God, this grace of God, hit the translator so powerfully, he couldn't continue. And he just could not continue. And uh, thankfully, one of the ladies in the congregation was an English teacher, and she got up and continued translating. And uh, the first word of knowledge I had in that service was for somebody's arm to be healed. And it was the, the, the lady who had mm. been translating. She was healed at the end of the translation. It was very powerful. Wow. Um, but um, yeah, that was, that was wonderful. Um, I once preached a message to a pastor's conference in Bulgaria, actually in Kustendil, mm -hmm. where, where you mentioned yep. the Kustendil with Chance and Didi Galloway. I'll and I was you. preaching at a pastor's conference there, and I preached on um, the, the difference between the new covenant and the old covenant. Mm -hmm. And I preached for about an hour, and the translator was there. And at the end of it, she turned to me and she said, because I, I didn't realize, I knew, I knew I was preaching in the evening. Mm -hmm. uh, I knew they'd organized me to preach at church. I didn't know where the church was, but she was actually the pastor's wife of the church I was preaching at in the evening. I didn't oh, realize wow. that. And at the end of it, she said, I don't care what you preach in my husband's church tonight. Mm -hmm. She says, but I'm preaching this message. <laughs> She says, I'm going to translate this message. So you can even preach it again, and I'll translate you. I'm, I'm going to, my, my, my church needs to hear this sermon. Well, and so it, I said, I'll tell you what, I'll go with you, and we'll do that then. Well, I mean, that, that first night in, in um, I'm going to remember this place's name. Uh, <laughs> don't, don't, don't worry about it. I mean, my okay. first night in Czech was amazing. Wonderful. Because like, I, I prepared that sermon. Normally, my sermon, um, Grace, is really focused on Jesus dying at the cross mm. for you to be healed. And I prepared it without talking about that. I was like, I don't know. That's a weird way for my mind to prepare it. And as soon as I finished, Brett Hager got up, and it was his turn to preach. And his first line for his sermon is, and another thing Jesus did for you at the yeah. cross Beautiful. was he, he paid Beautiful. for your healing. And so we just, um, and we prayed for the pastor of the church. He came up, and we prayed with him. We prayed for a few other people. And, we, you know, it wasn't so much about, the, the miracles uh, as it was just getting to pray with people mm -hmm. and getting to make, and I tell you who opened the doors for me, um, he's gone to be with the Lord now, sadly, but um, probably one of the strongest, most amazing evangelists ever is uh, Bengt Vorderman. Yeah, Bengt's ben actually been on this TV show yeah, before. So. And yeah, now he's now in heaven enjoying yep. his reward. A phenomenal evangelist though. And uh, he traveled all over the Czech Republic, all over that area. And the pastor I was working with, the, the, the first one for the first church, he became a preacher mm. translating Bengt Vorderman into Czech yeah. for the people. And he just memorized all the sermons that Bengt <laughs> preached. And you were like, well, I've known Bengt since I was a little boy. He's been yeah. a guest speaker at church for about a decade. So it was quite, yeah. you know, and, and he, Bengt had messaged me. Mm. And he was like, oh, I used to preach in the Czech Republic yeah. all the time. And, and I, I, I just, I, I, I was telling to this guy, oh, this man, Bengt Vorderman preached. And he was telling about he, and the guy's like, Bengt Vorderman taught me how to preach. <laughs> you know, and this, this, it's amazing this how you make awesome. these connections all yeah. over the, the, the mm. world. I was, at a, I was at a conference yesterday. A man, uh, your mum and I went to a conference yesterday. A man and I went to a conference. And uh, this couple came over and started talking. Mm. And uh, we knew this person called. We knew this person. It was just wonderful. And we're going to go and have lunch with them in a couple of weeks. And it was just wonderful. You know, but it's amazing how these things all fit together. We've only got a few minutes left, so just before we go, no, no, no more stories around. T tell us about this fact there's no condemnation in Christ. Tell the audience. Right, you know, well, let's, let's I reckon there's people turn. sitting watching this right now who are feeling condemned, feeling beat up. Just take a scripture, take two minutes, and just let us know we're not condemned. All right, so let's turn to Isaiah 54. Um, Isaiah 54. Verse 4, we're going to go here. This, this is one of my favorite verses and from one of my favorite sermons. Um, yeah. right, it says, Do not fear, for you will not be ashamed, neither be disgraced, for you will not be put to shame. You will forget the shame of your youth, and you will not remember the reproach of your widowhood anymore. Well, that, that last bit about not remembering the reproach of your widowhood, what's that talking about? Well, it's trying to talk about the fact that you're going to have bad stuff in the future, all right? People around you are going to die, and bad things are going to happen, but you don't have to let that affect you. And, and here's the greatest part about Isaiah 54. Isaiah 54 takes place after Isaiah 53. All right, Isaiah 54 takes place after talking about what Jesus did at the cross, about Jesus being killed at the cross. So therefore, we're living in Isaiah 54 verse 4 today. We're living in a, in a world where we don't have to fear. 
We don't have to feel ashamed or disgraced. We don't have to even remember the shame of the things we did in our youth. And we don't have to feel worried about our futures. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? You don't have to be afraid of anything. Fear not. I know some people say that's in the Bible 365 times. I don't understand why people say that. It only takes two minutes with a, a Google to find out it's only in the Bible about 70 times. Fear not. But it only needs to be in there once. Mm. It only needs to be in there once. Fear not. Don't fear. You have nothing to be afraid of at all. Nothing, yeah. nothing, nothing. Be bold. Be strong. God is with you. Now, if you look on the screen right now, you've got tree.church slash YouTube. We have about 200 hours of teaching on YouTube. Uh, myself, all the other pastors in the Tree Life family. Are you, are you, have you got a YouTube video on? Are you preaching anywhere? I'm not sure if we've oh, ever I, I think videoed. I've got one from when I was 19. One from my 19th years birthday. Of birthday. Awesome. Um, Good yeah. God. Um, there's certainly a lot of audio of you on the app. You've done a lot of preaching in some of our smaller churches, which has been really helpful. Um, but um, you want to find out more about Tree of Life, go to our website, tree.church, or you can get our app at tree.church. That's app. Uh, the other thing is this. You know, we, we, I don't mind. Adam doesn't mind. We don't mind you bootlegging our program. We don't mind you watching this for free. Um, but, you know, it costs money to create these programs. It costs money to go on air. It costs money. We're currently really doing a phenomenal work in the nation of Kenya. Uh, we're on TV there. I'm in contact with a lot of pastors there. I'm going to go out there as soon as all the restrictions lift. I used to go, I've gone there every year up until um, the restrictions came in. And uh, we also want to branch out into Uganda as well and start getting on TV there and start ministering there. So if you want to get involved in that and become a partner with what we're doing, help us get this great message of the God who does not condemn us, the great message of fear not, the great, the great God who, you know, can get you to Bible school even though you don't want to go, you want to go and learn something else, okay, then you can go and be partners with us. And the, the website for that is tree.church. And you click on the button that says dream partner, or you can type in tree.church slash dream partner and you can partner with us and help us get the word of God out there to other nations to other places and I believe that what we've got at Tree of Life is really special I believe that the message we've got not just myself but you know Adam and all our other pastors what we've got to teach is really helpful it really helps people meet Jesus encounter Jesus I know from some of your letters and some of your feedback you know when you call and everything it's just been wonderful so you want to help us get out further go to tree.church slash dream partner and uh, it really will help you um, get involved and you know pray for us every day get involved in giving to us and we'd really appreciate that you know awesome so give us a call if you want there's the usa number there we've also got a number for the uk and uh, the rest of the world as well we'd love for you to call us and you can text us as well if you want we'd love to hear from you if you've got a praise report testimony from watching this program if you've been inspired by what adam said or maybe you need prayer maybe you need prayer for healing maybe you're struggling with condemnation you just need someone to pray with you our tv angels are brilliant and they will pray with you stand four with four times you. out of five it's me yeah. answering yeah. the phone <laughs> adam is one of our TV angels, he's always on the phones at all the phone times. And so if you're watching this right now, Adam's probably sitting near a telephone uh, and you can phone up and you might, you might get through to him. Okay, awesome. Well, it's been a joy to be with you. Remember, Jesus Christ is on your side. He never turns his back on you. God is for you. And if God is for you, who could be against you? I believe with all my heart, good things are going to happen to you this week. So tune in next week and we'll see you again. Adam will be with me again and we'll have another great service. Thank you. Awesome. Amen. Praise God. Awesome. Great to be here.